Members may take their seats. It is time for member statements. Member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes Brock. As unanimous consent, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to allow members to wear lapel pins in recognition of scleroderma awareness. Day at Queen's Park, and I'd like to welcome them all here today. The member for Halliburton, Fourth Lakes Brock, is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow members to wear lapel pins in recognition of scleroderma awareness. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member for um, Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. On this date, November 6, we shine a green light to celebrate the achievements of 4-H clubs throughout our province and across Canada, spotlighting our vital connection to our agricultural community. At a recent tri-national agricultural accord in Virginia, where I was honoured to represent this province, it was agreed that one of our most pressing challenges is the engagement of our youth in honing their skills to take on future leadership roles, roles in agriculture and agri-food industries. Mr. Speaker, this is where 4-H clubs shine, sowing the seeds for future entrepreneurs, integrating learned experiences with the driving force of new thinking and new technologies. Our 4-H clubs are catalysts for change as we cha challenge the next generation to look at agriculture and agri-food industries through a different lens. At this time, I want to thank 4-H Club volunteers and I want to give a special shout out to the Lanark and the Frontenac 4-H Club contingents, bringing a prize-winning tradition of excellence to this year's Royal Winter Fair. Many of these 4-H members will go on to pursue careers in multi-generational farming, agri-food marketing, biodiversity, veterinarian sciences, and some will engage in the challenges of global food security. When the light shines today honouring 4-H clubs throughout Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston, may it illuminate the path forward for leaders in the future of sustainable agriculture. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Windsor West. I'm honoured to share with the House how incredible the arts community is in Windsor. Windsor is home to some of the most talented, hard-working entrepreneurs, artists, filmmakers and creators. This year, the Windsor International Film Festival celebrated its 20th year and just concluded its annual film festival, which showcased 13 feature films, 23 local films, 58 francophone feature films, 46 films selected from TIFF, 141 films from world-leading film festivals, 75 feature documentaries and 42 countries represented. Like every year, WIF drew long lines of eager viewers from Windsor, Essex, nearby communities and our American neighbours. Thank you to Vincent Georgie and the entire team at WIF for another incredible festival. Congratulations to Windsor resident Heidi L. M. Jacobs on her book 1934, the Chatham Coloured All-Stars Barrier Breaking Year. This week it was announced that the Speaker of this Legislature chose Heidi's book for the Speaker's Book Award. The book was published by Biblioasis, a local independent publishing company and bookstore, a true gem in Windsor. Lastly, I joined Hiatus House, Daddy, uh, Dr. Patty Fritz and Fartumo Cuso, whose daughter was killed by her partner last year, for a panel discussion about intimate partner violence hosted by Art Windsor Essex. The message was clear, Speaker. Declare intimate partner violence an epidemic and provide necessary resources and funding to support women and keep them safe. It is long past time for this government to join the nearly 100 Ontario municipalities that have declared IPV an epidemic. I am truly grateful to the team at Art Windsor Essex for hosting that crucial discussion. Thank you very much. Member statements. Next, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. While some people may be focused on the results of the U.S. election, I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the new Conservative leader of the U.K. Tories chose, uh, chosen on November 2nd, Kemi Badnock. Badnock was born in London, England, but largely raised in Lagos, Nigeria, uh, the home of her parents. She's a computer engineering graduate. She's feisty, fierce, and outspoken. I like her already. As Secretary of State for Business and Trade, Badnock noted many times that government doesn't create growth, you do. What government needs to do is create the environment for entrepreneurs to thrive, 
uh, and then get out of the way. That is the Conservative vision. We celebrate aspiration and provide opportunity. Conservatives know that economic growth and rising living standards come from flourishing businesses and dynamic entrepreneurs, not from red tape, race monitors, or compliance consultants. Conservatives believe in ca com um, capitalism. We believe in the power of business to do good. We don't think profit is a dirty word, and we're optimistic about our future. Badenoch is a supporter of free speech and describes herself as anti-woke. She's spoken up, out against identity politics and critical race theory and has promised to do, uh, fight what she describes as left-wing nonsense. She has argued that identity is multifaceted and conservatives do not pigeonhole people based on visible traits. I am black and also a woman, a mother, a politician, an engineer, British and Nigerian. All of these things have an effect on my views more so than my skin color. Congratulations and best wishes to Kemi Badenoch for every success in promoting a conservative vision. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I've been up this 4 a.m. this morning. I think probably like a lot of Canadians. I have a lot of friends in the United States, people who worked hard in the recent election, and I want to begin this member statement with a question. Is our movement for justice that we're all working for big enough? Does it include the person in the United States who's doing the dry cleaning for the congressman on his way to office who may not have perfect citizenship papers? Does it include the gig worker who can't put food on the table who's struggling, who doesn't feel seen in American politics and perhaps even in our politics for people from the same experience? Speaker? Does it include the woman who wants the right to control her own body and not to have someone else tell her what her health care decisions should be? Does it include people who may think differently than us? And this is where I want to make a, a desperate plea, Speaker, to folks who are thinking about the American election in Canada today. I want to invite us to consider no one's political supporters as garbage, no one's political supporters as deplorables. I want us to try to move past the toxic vitriol that politics has become, not just in the United States and our country, but around the world. Because the young people who are here in the gallery today, Speaker, the elders that gave us our democracy, they expect better. And we can fight for better, and we can organize for better. We can demand better. That's my message for today. Thank you very much. Member statements. Next, the member from Markham, Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as we enter respiratory illness season, I urge the people of Ontario to protect themselves and their loved ones by staying up to date with vaccinations. This year, flu and COVID-19 shots are widely available across the province to support our health and reduce strains on hospitals. Recently, I visited Unionville Guardian Pharmacy to receive both my flu and COVID-19 shots. The process was safe and convenient, showing how easy it is for all Ontarians to protect themselves this season. I want to emphasize the importance of vaccinating as it not only safeguards each of us, but also help protect those unable to be humanized, making our community healthier and stronger. Taking these simple steps means we can reduce unnecessary visits to hospitals and lessen the load on our health care system, keeping Ontario healthier and better prepared. Thank you to everyone prioritizing their health and to our pharmacies, health care providers and public health partners for making vaccination accessible throughout the province. Let us all do our part in ensuring a safe and healthy Ontario for ourselves, our families and our communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Parkdale High Park. 
you, Speaker. The Ford Conservatives have been in power for six years, and the housing crisis is out of control. The government's own Housing Affordability Task Force said that Ontario needs 1.5 million homes in the next 10 years. That's 150,000 new homes that need to be built every year. The Ford government failed to meet the target, so they lowered it to 125,000 homes a year. They failed to meet even that adjusted target, so they lowered it again to, to 88,000 homes. Now we learn that the target has been lowered again to about 81,000 homes, far below the original goal set by the task force and the adjusted lower targets they set for themselves. The only type of housing that is increasing dramatically is encampments. There are over 1,400 encampments in Ontario. According to the Ford government's own numbers, there are over 234,000 unhoused people. Can the Premier tell Ontarians how confident he is that his government will hit the three-time adjusted lower target? Take a moment to think about it, because we will hold you accountable come election time. And we know that the Premier is preparing for a snap election. Why should the people of this province give you another four years when you have done nothing in six? Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Lambton Kent Middlesex. Mr. Speaker, as we approach Remembrance Day, I rise to honour the courageous men and women who have served and continue to serve Canada and to recognize the ongoing efforts in my riding of Lambton Kent Middlesex to keep their memory alive. Today, I want to recognize a special initiative in my hometown of Thamesville, led by Darren Carther, a firefighter, Legion member, and a longtime friend to many of our community. Darren has created a powerful video projection display on the town hall to honor local veterans. This touching tribute, presented in collaboration with the Thamesville Legion Branch 367, includes heartfelt images of Thamesville veterans, each with their name and rank. This display will run every night until Remembrance Day, serves as a reminder of the legacy of those who served and those who will continue to serve our country. I'm also proud to acknowledge the beautiful work being done in Strathroy, Caradoc, where I attended the recent unveiling of the Poppy Project. Led by Museum Strathroy Caradoc, with support from local Legion branches, this initiative commemorates the 100th anniversary of the Strathroy Cenotaph. With help of countless community members who donated over 10,000 knitted and crocheted properties, pro, uh, poppies, the installation, displayed until November 11th, now cascades down Strathroy Town Hall and fills dedicated space at the Caradoc Cenotaph in Mount Bridges. Mr. Speaker, it is initiatives like Darren's video tribute and the Poppy Project in Strathroy Caradoc that help educate young people about the significance of service and sacrifice. In today's world, where these stories are less frequently taught, our veterans' legacies must be passed on, ensuring that their sacrifices are never forgotten. I would also like to acknowledge the role our local legions in the Lambton Kent Middlesex who serve veterans and their families year round. Their annual poppy campaign, they fund essential programs that directly support those who have sacrificed so much for Canada. This Remembrance Day, let us remember to honour, support and reflect on the courage and resilience of our veterans. Together, we can ensure their legacy endures for future generations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Speaker. Don Valley West is home to terrific neighbourhoods and active community groups. Recently, I attended the Leaside Sports Hall of Fame, which honours local residents who've made an impact in sport. 
This year, it was Olympic gymnast Cassie Lee who made us so proud at the Summer Olympic Games. Leeside High School's varsity girls hockey team, Philip Francis, and the late, great Pete Conacher. Congrats to the award recipients and thanks to the volunteers who put on this great event every year. But Speaker, there are challenges in Don Valley West too. Almost 30,000 people, 29% of my constituents, don't have a family doctor. That's even more than the 28% in the Premier's riding who don't have a family doctor. While they wait for primary care, a provider for primary care, people like Amal wait long hours in the ER with his screaming, in pain toddler. Too bad this government's given people a map to the nearest booze outlet when what they need is a government that gives them primary care. Then there are the infrastructure issues. On Halloween night, Thorncliffe Park residents had no power for eight hours and were last to have their power restored. In the summer, Leaside residents' homes were flooded. Speaker, we need a government that fixes these serious issues people face every day instead of one focused on booze and deal after deal to help their insider friends. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Many of us have seen the videos over the weekend of a violent attack against worships, worshippers at a Hindu temple in Peel region. Unfortunately, in the past year, we have seen too many incidents of hate, violence, and vandalism against religious institutions and places of worship. Religious intolerance, including anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, and anti-Christian rhetoric is on the rise. At Merciful Redeemer Catholic Parish in my riding of Mississauga and Mills, there have been multiple incidents of vandalism over the past year, three times in two months, Mr. Speaker. And at Qasim al Islamic Center in Statesville, there was also an incident of vandalism. In Ontario, we respect the right of protest and express disagreements, but we don't tolerate violence acts of hatred and intolerance. Very simple, Mr. Speaker, no tolerance for intolerance. We must stand firm in supporting religious freedoms for all Canadians. Speaker, this weekend I also attended the Ukrainian Remembrance Ceremony with members of Otoboku Centre. It was a solemn moment of reflection and I was honoured to attend thousands, thousands of Ukrainians serving as members of the Canadian Armed Forces during the Second World War, including the historic Battle of Normandy. Many sacrificed their lives and are buried there for our freedoms. Speaker, my bill 2115, the Ukrainian Heritage Month Act, will pass provide opportunities to reflect on the celebration of contributions of Ukrainian Canadians to our Canadian multicultural fabric. I'm looking forward to discuss it further on November 27th. Thank you. Anyway, thanks for the vote. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Centre. Today, to honour the solemn occasion of Remembrance Day and to pay tribute to those who have served and sacrificed for our country and the world. This day holds profound personal significance, reminding us of the courage, resilient, and dedication of Canadian Armed Force, past and present. In Ontario, we join Canadians from coast to coast to coast in wearing the poppy and standing in silence to remember the lives for the freedom we enjoy today. These heroes, bravery and commitment inspire us, underscoring the value of peace, freedom, sacrifice that define our nation. I would like to acknowledge the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 617, which plays a vital role in the writing of Scarborough Centre, supporting veterans, preserving their legacy and fostering a sense of community. I'd like to extend my gratitude to Debbie Sheffe, the President of Branch 617, and her team for their unwavering commitment to our veterans and their family. As we honour their sacrifice, let us also commend 
to ensuring their stories and legacy live on for the future generation as we forget. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.